Hey, so today we're gonna be talking about how to take your image from this to this and really just prove that if you follow these steps, you can light and film in just about any location and get great results, uh, whether that's a bedroom or just an, a really ugly location. So the first thing you wanna do is choose your location. Now, sometimes you don't get to pick your location, whether that's because uh, where you're filming is being dictated to you by a client or because it's just in your house, you have limited space, uh, like you're in a bedroom or an office or whatever it is. But if you can, you do wanna choose the best angles that you can in those locations. So the first thing I do is I walk around the camera and try to figure out where the best spot to set the camera was going to be. The things I'm looking for is can I create space with depth? Uh, meaning can I separate myself from the background? I don't wanna be right on the background. You don't want your subject really, really ever right on the background. Uh, it, it creates a lack of space and it's usually just not visually appeal appealing. The next thing I'm looking for is, is the frame just interesting? Um, is there th things that uh, make it interesting or is it just ultra boring? And so that's the next thing I'm looking for is, is the frame somewhat interesting? Uh, is it uh, something that is uh, visually appealing? And then the last thing is I'm looking for distractions. I really don't want anything in there that can be distracting. And so uh, most of the time you can just clean that stuff up, but sometimes you can't. And so if you have a window that's distracting or uh, just maybe there's like a light switch on the wall or whatever it is, you're just looking to eliminate distractions as best you can. But once we've chose our location, the next thing you're gonna do is clean the location. So what I mean by that is you're gonna just clean your background. So uh, as you noticed, I went through and I, I cleaned up all the mess, I decluttered, I made sure that things that were gonna stay in the frame were in the right spot, uh, and ultimately I'm just trying to eliminate distractions. Once you've cleaned your background, this leads to the last step before we start to light, and that is to uh, lock your camera off. And so this is the step where you make your final tweaks, get your subject in place, make sure everything's exactly where you want it, and then now you're not gonna touch your camera again. The, the camera's locked down and we can begin to light. So now that we're on to light, the first light we're gonna introduce is a key light. And a key light is the light that's gonna illuminate your subject and expose your subject for the camera. Now I place my key lights 45 degrees to one side of the subject and 45 degrees above them. And so in this instance, I took it 45 degrees to my left and 45 degrees above my head. And then as far as distance goes, I take the light as close as I can that the frame will still allow. You don't want your, your light dome obviously showing into the frame, but if you can get it as close as you can, that's ideal. And so in this instance, I'm using an Aperture 120D Mark II with the Aperture light dome. And again, it's just about three feet from my face and it's a fairly large light source. So the next light we're gonna introduce is the backlight or the kicker light or the hair light. And what this is, is it's a light opposite of your key light that's more of a spot that's designed to spill around your subject's shoulder, face, and hair to separate the subject from the background. In this instance, I'm using an aperture light storm, again, more in a spot, and it's just spilling around my shoulder, creating a little bit of separation from myself and the background. The last lights we're gonna introduce are the lights that are uh, lighting up the background. And these are two aperture uh, MCs, and all they're doing is bringing a little bit of exposure to the background and bringing a little bit of visual interest by being a different color temperature to create a little bit of color contrast and color separation as well. And so usually after you light your subject, if you have no ambient light on, meaning no lights uh, on in your location, what's gonna end up happening is your subject's gonna be well lit and your background's just gonna fall into darkness, which is okay and that's a decent look. But oftentimes uh, you're gonna need to just bring up your exposure a little bit with some light and it also will just, again, help bring some interest to the background um, so that it's not distracting but also not just so dark. So now I'm just gonna turn on each light individually, one after another, so you can see what each light is doing. So first, we're gonna turn on the key light. Now we're gonna turn on the backlight. And now we're gonna turn on the two MCs in the background lighting up the background. Now you don't need these exact same lights, but if you use this combination and this method, I'm sure you can light just about anywhere uh, really well, no matter how ugly it is. And so to prove that, I'm gonna take these same lights and the same method 
and light up one of the other locations that I didn't pick uh, for this spot here. And so I'm gonna do a quick time lapse and you're gonna see me in a second in a different location. So as you can see, using a key light, a background light to create separation on my side here, and then lighting the background up to, to increase exposure, but as well as just give visual interest, we came up with a great look in this location as well. And so really, it doesn't have anything to do with the lights or the manufacturers, but really just the concepts themselves. And so I hope this is helpful to you. If you stuck around till this point, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Um, if you'd like and subscribe, that would be amazing. Uh, again, Thank you, I hope this was helpful. If you have questions, leave them in the comments below. Uh, if not, I'll see you in the next one.